too many voices in the quarterback room. We've heard this sentiment repeated by Carson Wentz. We've heard Doug Peterson say it. I'm honestly, I would love to hear what Jalen Hurts has to say about this too, because I think Jalen Hurts could be a, a sound person to hear from this kind of comment as well. But let's talk about this, man. We, we need a quarterback coach, I, in my opinion. I feel like we do. So, all right, y'all, let's get into today's topic. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Divinge Rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this, guys. Once again, my name is Steven Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, today's topic. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> today's topic is going to revolve around this idea and this concept of too many voices in the quarterback room. And, you know, do we need a quarterback coach? Because I, I really feel like we do. I'm just going to lay my cards out on the table right from the jump and tell you guys that I feel like Press Taylor and Andrew Briner are assistant quarterback coach type material. They shouldn't be the guy leading the room, in my opinion. I just don't think they have the requisite experience to be in that position. And that's what I want to talk about today, guys. And I know some of you are probably like, Steve, you're out here trying to get Jalen Hurts yoked up. No, like, I get it. Jalen Hurts is probably not going to be as straightforward and in, in, in as coming as guys like, you know, Carson Wentz are going to be who are got a huge contract to protect themselves. Like, I, I get that. But you got to admit, it would be fascinating now that we know, you know, Carson Wentz's perspective on this, now that we know Doug Peterson's perspective on this. Like, I, I do wonder, like, what did Jalen Hurts think? Like, coming out of college – which you were used to, you know, out of the system you're coming out of from, like, Oklahoma and Alabama. Like, what were your thoughts on the way that the Eagles approached the quarterback room, the way that we coached up quarterbacks? Like, I, I would be fascinated to hear. I would love to have an opportunity to actually ask these type of questions, but I would never, ever get a press pass, guys. They, they'll never let me in for that kind of thing. All right, y'all. Without further ado, let's get into it. Topic number one here. I want to talk about Press Taylor's experience, guys. Look, I'm not saying you have to have 20 years in the league, 10 years in the league, 5 years in the league, that you need to be a star quarterback in college. That you, I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is you need actual requisite experience coaching. And, like, when I look at Press Taylor, I just I, I don't feel that we have that with him, okay? He spent two years at a community college. Okay, look, he was very good at that community college. I'm not knocking it, Okay. But I will say that that level of competition is a little different, guys. Um, past that community college, he had nine career attempts at Marshall. Not exactly the most experienced guy, okay? But that's okay, man. You're playing career is your playing career, all right? That doesn't make you a bad coach, per se. Sometimes, actually, guys that aren't that talented make better coaches, to be quite honest. But with that said, when I look at this guy's requisite like coaching experience, like he had like one year of coaching quarterbacks at like Tulsa. And then, you know, he was like, you know, assistant personnel type guys in the NFL. I mean, he really didn't, he really wasn't in the room in 2017 with the Eagles. I mean, that's not what he was doing. I mean, that room was one person's sole responsibility. And then you had Doug and you had Frank Reich that would set in, but they didn't lead the room. John Filippo led that room. That was his throne. That was his castle. That quarterback room was. Like, I didn't like... The announcement that Andrew Briner and, you know, Press Taylor were the two people coaching these quarterbacks. Like, these are the two guys that I would question their requisite experience to lead the room. I'm not saying they couldn't be assistants or very good assistants. I'm not saying that Andrew Briner doesn't have the time while he's just really working on the analytics of things to then also help as a former quarterback himself and a guy who has a very small sample size of coaching experience as a quarterback to have helped in the room. But I'm just not satisfied with that answer, guys, in terms of the requisite experience. It, it just made no sense to me. And I'm going to get into it in a second, guys, and I'll tell you who I feel like would have made the most sense here, but didn't get the opportunity. All right. Who would I put in there? I, I know it may not be popular. 
I would have put Rich Grandrello as my quarterback coach, okay? I think some of this has to come down to Doug and Doug's, like, lack of connections throughout the league. I don't understand how this guy has no connections throughout the league. You should have a list of names you know from your time in the league of guys that are on the upcoming, guys that know how to coach, guys that come highly recommended. You have to network in this position. I just, I don't, look, I don't know to be fair. Like, look, I'm not going to sit here and completely dump on this guy because I don't know to be fair. I, I don't know, guys. But it doesn't seem like he has that networking experience to, to really work that out with his coaches. I mean, that was part of the struggle, you know, like last year with, with figuring out an OC. We just didn't have the requisite connections there to really entice somebody. Um, Rich Grangello has experience here, guys. He's run Shanahan's style of offense. He, he knows how to move the pocket. He knows how to coach these guys, right? You guys saw me do videos where I broke down that one of the key staples of Rich Grangello coach quarterbacks is right-handed guys, he does not want their right foot forward. He wants their left foot forward on right-handed guys. That's how you know that Rich Grangello is diving in deep. And I know that Rich took the job, and one of the first things he said is, is that with the constraints on time, he wasn't going to necessarily work with quarterbacks on their footwork, per se. There's not enough time for that, but... It's disappointing that Rich Grandrello wasn't the person out there working on mechanics. Because Rich Grandrello is the guy that has a proving track record of turning around guys' mechanics, okay? He did this with, with Locke last year in Denver, okay? Well, 2019 in Denver. He's done this before in San Francisco. He's fixed guys' mechanics, okay? Young guys. I just felt like he would have been the right guy for, you know, a rookie and a guy that's struggling that's coming into the beginning years of a second contract. Like... I feel like he would have been the right guy in the room. I don't feel like I'm crazy for thinking that. I don't. I'm not saying that it would have ultimately worked out, but, like, that's the dude with the requisite experience. Like, I don't know, guys. I'm going to get into to some ideas here going forward in a little precautionary tale here. Okay, guys going forward who could come in here and fix the situation, guys. I, I don't know what you do here. I think you, you try to find you a veteran coach who maybe spent time as an offensive coordinator, maybe, you know, was it was quality control or some kind of, you know, some kind of position like that that you could bring in that has requisite experience coaching quarterbacks and just tell them they're going to coach your quarterbacks. Rich Grandrello would have made a lot of sense there. Maybe they'll circle back around to that. I don't know. Um my cautionary tale would be this, guys. There's always an element in me that feels like be careful what you wish for in Philadelphia. So, we know we need an OC. We know that, other than title, the guy that kind of handled the duties of the OC, I mean, our OC doesn't traditionally call plays with Doug, but that guy was kind of Press Taylor, right? Press Taylor was kind of like the liaison between Doug and the rest of the coaches, like, he helped. He did get some play calling responsibility down the stretch. We saw that Doug said he was going to turn a little bit over to Press Taylor. Um, he was already designing passing plays, although Doug was the main guy there. But I mean, he's already kind of contributing to scripting those plays. Like, there's a part of me that feels like, be careful what you wish for here, guys, because we might get a new quarterback coach because they might end up moving Press Taylor to OC. That is not the outcome I want. Please, let's make that clear. Gate City is not endorsing that move. I do not want that outcome. I'm just saying, I know Philadelphia, man. I was born in 83. I'm a lifelong Eagles fan. I've seen some guys. I know there's people out there that have seen a lot longer sample size than me. Hopefully they can back me up on this. Be careful what you wish for in Philadelphia. That that I am concerned about, genuinely. Um, I think we need a vet here, though, man. We need a guy. We're in a bad quarterback situation right now. We need a guy that can come in and try to fix mechanics, okay? Because... Yeah, we can rework, and I'm going to do some contract videos coming up, guys. We can rework, you know, some of Carson Wentz's contract. He's got a $10 million in a, you know, kind of a, a signing bonus that you could rework here, okay? He's got other guarantees in his contract as well that we could rework. Um, some of the things you could look at there with, with Carson Wentz is the roster bonus and his prorated bonus. The prorated bonus, of course, alluding to some of the signing bonus. And then your roster bonus is just the bonus you get for being on the team. You could definitely rework those, those bonuses and then kind of move that cap number for 2021. But I think we need a guy in here to legitimately work with either a guy with only a four-game sample size of experience or to work with a guy who seems to be very fundamentally flawed right now. 
because we have big decisions coming up. And if we're going to delay this decision for another calendar year, like, we need somebody in here, man. We need somebody in here that, that actually has experience coaching quarterbacks. I don't know how to say this any clearer than I'm saying, guys. Like, I'm not happy with what we have. Um, I'll try to make a video where I talk about, like, candidates for the quarterback coaching position. I have to look around the league and get a feel, guys. I don't have any really big names in mind right this second, guys. I need to look and see who's going to be available. I need to look and see their requisite experiences, what they believe in, their philosophies of coaching the position. You know what I'm saying? I got to see stuff like that before I go out there and start putting, like, stamps of approval on, on individuals. I'm not going to do that without physically seeing what these guys can offer us first. I'm just not going to do that. All right, y'all, if you want to support the channel, three things you can do that are really easy. And they don't cost you anything. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Those are the three easiest ways of supporting this channel, and they're greatly appreciated by this here content creator, Steve. I do appreciate y'all for doing that. Um, hey, man, I'll see you on the next video. I will be returning back to the salary cap discussion, and I'm going to talk about, like, I've talked about guys that could potentially be traded or cut, June 1st designated, all that. I've talked about Carson Wentz's contract in detail, and uh, the video before this video, I kind of talked about a little bit about some of the other aspects to, to free agency here that we could see happening. So the next video coming up, guys, is going to talk about restructuring, right? So I'm going to talk about restructuring contracts. Who might be some of the guys that we turn to to restructure deals so that way we don't have to end up trading or cutting too many players. I mean, some guys are going to get it. There's just no doubt about it. But, you know, we don't want this thing to go too far. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here.